So I hope everyone is doing great. Today we are talking about um, substrate uh, because there is a lot of talk about substrate because there is a lot of talk. There is a lot of topic. There is a lot of different substrate. And let's go. So the first thing is what is substrate? Substrate is your actual ground. What is your actual crown, you might say? It's the floor, it's your newspaper, it's what is on the bottom of your enclosure. Whether it's your cocoa, whether it's your reptivark, whether it's your cypress mulch, whether it's your newspaper, what is your paper, whether it's um, stuff for babies, you know, um, doggy, like dog puddle, paddles, puddles. I'll, I'll put the right word and an example here. So it's that, you know, reptive soil, whatever. It is that. Now, <clears throat> The thing is that there is so much options, so much. You can go for cocoa, you can go, you, one, you can go for cocoa, two, you can go for cypress mulch, three, you can go for forest floor, you can go for just a regular garden, bio, bio garden like cocoa, you can go for reptile bark, you can go for aspen, you can go for paper, you can go for bioactive soil, you can go for reptile soil, you can go for a bunch of stuff that you you can't even know and you can't even name everything because there's so much but now thing is how do you choose the right substrate for your snake first thing first is to know where your snake comes from i mean i would not give cocoa to a sand boa like a canyon sand boa or a sidewinder you know uh, or a sand viper a horn bite. So the thing is that first you have to know what the species you're keeping. For myself, for example, I keep bull pythons, I keep carpet pythons, I keep coarse snakes. There is nothing crazy about it, um, but they all come from from regions that are partially humid or a little bit humid, you know. So I will go for you can you go on a substrate that can be okay for humid stuff. Now, you will say that a lot of breeders, corn snake breeders, are on aspen. A lot of bull python breeders are on paper. Same goes for carpet python. But you can always do better. You can always choose better. But how do you choose better? Thing is, first you have to know where do you live? Do you live in a humid area? Do you live in a dry area? Do you live in a hot area? Do you live in a cold area? Do you live, you know, all that type of param external parameters, you know, what what type of enclosure do you have? What type of do you have? You know, is it outdoor? Is it indoor? Is it like, you know, if you have like 20% humidity and you keep a dragon snake? Don't do that, but you get the idea. A dragon snake? Or do you live in a place where it's like always 80, 90% humidity and you have a, a, a desert horn viper? It's not... The answer won't be the same because for example if you keep a corn snake in a 20 percent yeah, when and uh, where you live it's 20 percent humidity maybe you'll go it would be okay to go on a more humid type of substrate if you, you live in a 80 percent humidity climate it's maybe better to go on a more drier type of substrate so the thing is there is no straight answer to you to being like going on What's the best substrate for my snake? The best substrate of your snake is first, what do you want? Second, what's, what do you need? Where do they come from? What's your external parameters? Because there's something that not, not a lot of people are talking about, but because there is a lot of theory. And the thing is that you need first to know your external parameters. Is it the hot, you know, for example, temperature is also another example. If you live in a, in a space, in a, here, for example, where I live, it's between 20 and 25 degrees Celsius all year round without having to heat anything. It's just how the where I live is, where the flat I live is, it's just like that. So I would not need to have a big heat source for the whole enclosure to be sure that the cold side will be hot enough. But I will need still the hot because because well it's not 30 degrees in here you know so i can't just stay 
ambient. It's not 28 degrees Celsius, so I can't stay just ambient, okay? So this is the thing. Now, when it comes to substrate, it's almost the same thing, but with humidity and also with the species. So here I live, well, in the flat I live, it's always between 30, 28 and uh, 30, 42 percent humidity inside. So I went for a more humid substrate for everyone first because I feel it like it's more natural because of where they come from. Originally, of course, they're not from the wild. I don't have any wild card here. I mean, I would not see in the wild those type of mutation. I would not see that type of cross. And albino snakes are not, I mean, the first Darwin albino, albino Darwin carpet python was found in the wild, of course, but it's not like what you would encounter mo most. And the snow sun kissed albino, no snow sun kissed coral, blah, blah, blah. You know, six or seven heads or stuff, you know, quad, visual, blah, blah, blah. You would not see that in the wild either for corn snakes. So you might just like, you know, so I don't have any white card here. But originally, they come from a space like they, the US. And I mean, most, most corn snake we have here from the Florida area, which is a little more humid. The bone pythons that come from Africa, Ghana, Benin, Togo, which are pretty humid also area, whether you want it or not. Or carpet python, like here, Darwin carpet python, that comes from an area that is, that can be really quite dry, but also can be quite humid. So having the balance of, the bo of both is great. Now, the thing is that here I go, it's pretty dry in here, even though you see maybe I'm sweating maybe, but you see that maybe, but the thing is that it's pretty dry here. It's just pretty hot. It's pretty dry here. So the thing is I go on humid substrate to be sure that I have at least enough humidity to have a good shed, even though these bitches are not shedding well, just because, not because of the humidity this time, but for hydration. Maybe we'll talk about sheds another time, you know? So yeah. So the thing is, yes, of course, you know, you have like your substrate, everyone saying, hey, for that species, you should take that substrate. There are substrate, you know, that you don't use for some snakes. For example, whatever your climate is, never use Aspen on bull python. Never, ever, 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 ever. And from my honest opinion, I would not use Lignocell either for any snake. And I would not use Aspen on any snake either. But that's my take, you know. I would always prefer to go on Coco, the go for Coco this time, you know, because it's the, the brand I'm using. Or maybe Cypress Mulch or Sand or Play Sand or a mix of Reptisol and Play Sand or Reptisol or Eco Earth or whatever, you know. I would not go on Aspen on shredded paper or paper uh, or, you know, a Legnosil, you know, even though lots of people like this substrate, you know, I'm just not a big fan myself because first, 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 it's pretty dry substrate and I'm not a big fan of it. And um, also the stuff that is not, it doesn't look super natural, which is, I'm not a big fan either. You know, I like to look at it a little bit more like ground floor, like real floor, okay? Even though you don't find cocoa like that in the wild, of course, but you get that idea of trying to be as close as a wild while being easy to take care of, okay? So this is the main stuff. Now, going back to the question, because we are diverging from that question. Now, the question is, what is the best substrate? First, the best substrate is the best substrate from what they come from. If it comes from a humid hair area, I mean, you won't put sand for a dragon snake, so don't put sand for a human species. You would not take um, something humid like reptile soil for a desert horn viper, for example, in my opinion. So don't go for that. They live in a drier climate, just give them a drier climate type of substrate. They live in a more humid area, give them a more humid type of substrate, tropical type of substrate, as they call it. Uh, in marketing wise, you know, tropical substrate. It also needs to be like, depending on where you live, 
Where do you live? Do you live in a humid area, dry area, uh, super hot area? Um, like substrate is more like humid and um, drier area. So do you live in dry area while keeping a humid species? Then maybe you should have like something that keeps humidity better. If you live in a humid area and we keep a drier species, maybe it's better to have something that will keep your snake dry, your animal drier than the humid stuff from the humid as much as possible, of course, from the humid area that you live in. For example, even though I know if it's 80% uh, in your flat, for example, or in your house, it won't be like 20% in the enclosure. But if you can get there, you know, you can just be like, okay, I give it like a dry substrate. Maybe it will help, you know, of some stuff. It depends also what you want. If your project is going bioactive, I don't think having newspaper will help. You know, you will be better to have like clay ball, clay balls, um, rapti soil, uh, health mix and all that stuff. If you want to have something easy to take care of and you have like a humid species like most of us or a kind of humid species like most of us, then going on cocoa, going on rapti bark, going on rapti soil, you know, is maybe the answer for you, you know. The thing is that what I would always advise is check on your species and check on your area. What is your area like? What is your snake? What, your, what is the species needs? And then going for, from that. Now I have my general answer for me because most species I want are not deserts like species. So I know for example that I can stay on cocoa for almost all species that I'll keep in the future, you know, because of the brand that I'm using. So go for cocoa. That is really, really good. You know, even though it's dry, even though it's super humid or stuff, you know, it works really well. I don't know what you want me to undress myself, but I won't undress. You know, we're on YouTube. You can't just undress me, you know, or trying to. Okay. We're good with that. So the thing is, yeah, you know, you, it's 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 like super dependent it's not a, it's a variable answer you know there's no one straight answer for that stuff of course your brands you always hear the brand say hey it's perfect for you you keep that species i have the perfect substrate for you even though you don't know where they, they don't know where you live because if it's a human species species you don't need a dry substrate which is normal of course which is a general answer and if you really want an answer i would say if you keep a dry species a driest type of need that a species that need drier type of environment of course go for something drier if it means more humidity of course go for something more humid but you get the idea it's like when you go on the humid side of stuff because the, the, the desert desert type species of course is pretty easy but for the more most species it's like i don't know and then there's the, this variable of external parameters of where do you live uh what's the humidity like where you live how it is like wh where you live, what do you want, and all that type of stuff. So, yeah, I mean, it doesn't answer the question, but it answered the question also. So, I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share. Don't forget to support your side. Don't forget to jump on Kids and Pets group. Don't forget to support responsible reptile keeping. And hope to see you. And don't forget to Instagram also, out of reptile, to see all the updates of these guys. And hope to see you on the next one.